I guess we'll start with the with the pledge. Mark's getting up, so I guess I guess we will try getting up here. <laughs> we will try. Okay. Pledge of allegiance to the flag to the of the United, United States, States of America, America to the Republic of One nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There's some there's some lag vocal in there. Okay, I'd like to call the meeting to order. Um, just want to go over a couple things really quick tonight. This is, for the most uh, part, most of us here, this is our first uh, Zoom planning board meeting. I think one of the, probably the uh, most important thing is, so we try not to talk over one another. Um, and we try to give Amy a fighting chance to uh, sort of take minutes and see what's going on. So uh, let me see, we got that. Uh, okay, so I, <clears throat> let's address the um, the minutes from the last meeting. You know, we what we can do to help too also is whoever's going to make the motion, if you can give your name, then make the motion, and the same with uh, whoever's going to second it. I think maybe that would help Amy out a little bit. Yes, thank you. Okay. So, so this is Ron, and I move we approve the minutes from the last meeting. Thank you, Ron. You're welcome, Amy. And uh, this is Hal, and I'll second it. Thank you, Hal. Okay. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Okay. Under applications, first one is Ridgeview Commons. It's a 22 residential lot subdivision, PUD. It's zone, uh, zone two, Ridgeview Commons townhouses. We have a request for a 90 day extension of the subdivision approval by Ridgeview Commons townhouses for LLC for Ridgeview Commons 22 residential lot subdivision PUD. Property is located on Wilton Gansford Road on 6.03 acres. It is tax map number 114.2-15. Dot two, it is zoned PUDD. So we are looking for a motion for that. All right, Dave Gabe here. I'll make a motion to approve the request for a 90 day extension. Subdivision, uh, Ridgeview Commons townhomes, uh, Ridgeview Common 22 residential lot subdivision, PUDD zone two. Located at Wilton Gansert Road on 6.03 acres, tax map 114-215-2, uh, zoned PUD. Uh, seeker is complete on that. Thank you, Dave. Dave Chitalp, mile second. Okay. Comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay, next is Johnson's Auto Crusher of Corinth. It's a request for a 90 day extension of a subdivision approved by James and John Johnson for Johnson's Auto Crusher of Corinth, Inc. for an approved two lot subdivision. Property is located on 81 Ballard Road on 24.4 acres. It's tax map number 128 dot dash one dash eight it is zone c2 so we're looking for a motion for that extension all right so amy this is ron i, I move to approve the 90-day extension of subdivision approval for james and john johnson for johnson's auto crusher of corinth inc for an approved two-lot subdivision 
property located on 81 Ballard Road on 24, I'm sorry, on 24.432 acres, tax map number 128-1-8, zone CR2. Conditioned upon compliance with the town engineer, Ryan Riper's review letter dated September 11th, 2019, that the county planning board comments are addressed and approved by county D DPW, driveways are eliminated, mobile homes are removed, and county right of way is cleared of obstructions. There are no new or different environmental impacts requiring further seeker review. Thank you, Ron. I have a question. Question? Yep. Are, the, are those new conditions or were those already the conditions of approval? I assume those were already the conditions of the existing approval, right? Yes. Correct. All right, so that's fine. So those, so the extension, I mean, that's fine. The motion's fine, just for future reference. If we're extending, we don't need to repeat the conditions, but that's fine. Okay. Thank right. you, Mark. Dave Catalpo, I second. Thank you, Dave. Okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. And next, we have North Manor Development, Burnham Hollow. It's a request by North Manor Development for a second 90-day extension for Burnham Hollow subdivision. Project uh, has incurred a delay due to reaching an agreement with a third party, which is needed to ensure the easement is completed. Property located on 52 through 58 Burnham Road on 8.7 acres. Tax map 114.15-3-8.1 zone R1. <laughs> Again, looking for a motion for a nice day extension. All right, uh, Dave Gabe here. I'll make a uh, motion for a 90 day extension for North Manor Development, Burnham Hollow Subdivision. Uh, it's incurred a delay to reaching an agreement with third party uh, until easement is completed. It's located at 52 uh, slash 58 Burnham Road on 8.7 acres. Tax map is 114.15-3-8.1, zoned R1. The seeker is complete. Thank you, Dave. Uh, Amy, it's Hal. I'll second that. Thank you, Hal. Okay. Any comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Next, under regular applications, we have a, <clears throat> a Stanley Business Facility, John Stanley, with application for application for preliminary site plan by John Stanley for Stanley Business Facility for a one-story, four thousand square foot garage with an attached six hundred and twenty-four square foot office and two 10,000 square foot single storage, single story self storage facilities. Properties located on two Blue Loop and Lane in Ballard Road on 3.54 acres, tax map 128.1-91 zone C2. Hi, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is Lynn Sipperly representing John Stanley. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Great, great. Well, we were last before the planning board in December of 2019 and uh, have made a submission uh, on March 3rd and it was delayed naturally because of uh, the coronavirus uh, and everybody needing to uh, stay at home. But since our last meeting with the uh, planning board we've made substantial progress on the project where we completed the engineering design prepared a site and utility plan grading plan landscape and lighting plan the stormwater design and report we also prepared a truck turning radius plan for the self storage units based on the town of wilton uh, fire equipment uh, we prepared a site rendering, which was uh, unfortunately was late in submission to the planning board, and I apologize for that. Uh, 
we responded to review comments from uh, Ryan, uh, and we also prepared uh, two sign renderings of uh, what might be uh, on the uh, business signs. Uh, I, I think items of maybe of, of importance to the board is that uh, the site uh, has a uh, you know proposes a oil water separator system in the back of the building. It's a uh, it's a concrete slab with a drain in the center. You know, in the uh, surface water uh, flowing to the drain, we have a, a duplex. Uh, series of oil water separators to to uh, filter out any oil that might be in the, in that uh, wastewater. Uh, we also uh, corrected the plan. We, actually, I think we put on the plan that a proposed phasing plan that would occur here. John Stanley uh, proposes to build this in three phases. So the first phase would be the uh, garage and his uh, facility so that he can move his operation to this location. The second phase, which would probably be a year later, would, to build, would be to build one self-storage self building. And then uh, a third phase would be to build the second self-storage building. Um, uh, I guess what's happened in the in, in interim also is John Stanley has purchased the property. Uh, he had a contract, uh, but the contract was getting near expiration date and he purchased the property. So now he's anxious to uh, be able to go on the property and do some site clearing if that's possible. Uh, and we are uh, requesting if, if, if in order that the uh, or provide us or grant to the project uh, preliminary site plan approval. Uh, that's basically what has occurred since our last presentation to the board in person. Uh, and we're willing to uh, entertain any questions that you, you would have. Okay. Are there, uh, let me see, Ryan, are you there? Yes. So okay. you, would you like me to go over the items? Sure. Uh, Josh, if you could zoom in on the uh, corner intersection area, looking at the landscape. Um, so this is one thing I want the board to pay attention to. If you recall, across from Ballard Road, um, I forget which homeowner it was. It was one of these uh, homeowners directly across the road from the the new building, you know, I don't know if it was this homeowner or this homeowner, but they had concern with seeing, you know, the equipment, parking equipment there. Um, so it was suggested that they enhance the landscape buffering along, you know, Ballard Road to show the bulk storage of the materials, you know, they're gonna be off to, can everybody see my little pen here? Yeah. Okay. So bulk storage materials over in this area and then equipment parking, which would I assume would occur, you know, in this area here. Um, so what they have proposed is, are white pines spaced apart. Uh, you know, too close, but um, just white pines as a buffer. And we all know white pines are pretty sparse. So I recommended that they enhance the landscaping with a denser evergreen um, to shield that buffering um, from the residents across the road. Uh, and that's one thing, you know, just the planning board to look at and take in consideration. And also let the applicant know that even though what's shown on the plans, additional landscaping may be requested at time of installation of the landscaping. Ryan, can I interject a little bit? Yep, go ahead. Uh, at that location that you mentioned where the uh, employee parking is going to be, that's also the location of the present, of a present curb cutter driveway into the property. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of an open area there. What we're really proposing is two things. We're proposing to put a solid six foot uh, fence along, the, along that total area in front of the parking 
and then in, in front of that on the Ballard Road side to put in some evergreen trees to break up the fence, the linear, linear area of the fence. So I, I, the, the fence is really to provide an immediate positive screening of any uh, automobiles parked there, employee parking, or any uh, equipment that might be parked in that area. Uh, just, just, just wanted to bring that point up that we also have a fence proposed. Mr. Cipro, is that fence, this is Brett, uh, that fence um, looks like 110 feet, is that what I'm reading correctly? That's that's correct. Okay. It, it covers, so it stops. That, total, it covers that total opener. Yeah, it's actually to the west side of the fence in, 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 in our storage area. Presently, there's a pretty dense pine forest there. And our proposal is to maintain that Pine forest. So that's why we actually prepared this photographic plan, you know, a plan showing photographs looking into the site both during the summer season and we took also photos in December when all the leaves were off the trees. That area is, is quite dense and uh, uh, this, the proposal is that we maintain that dense pine forest and during clearing, if, if when we clear behind that, if it's open, we would either supplement the open areas with additional you know, evergreen trees, or we could extend the fence further westerly and pr provide both the solid screen with the fence and then you know, the, the evergreen trees will still remain between the storage yard and Ballard Road, if, if, you know, if I'm clear in that description. Yeah, so Josh, can you pull up the rendering real quick? Yep. So, yeah, so what's shown in the rendering would not be uh, clearly as, uh, as Lynn is stating. Um, if you look in front of the self storage buildings off to the left, uh, additional pines, you know, the existing natural vegetation and forested area is in that area and would be shielding the self-storage units, but the rendering does not depict that. So I just want to make sure that, you know, as it's shown with this depiction of the rendering, vegetation should be more than what it is here. Um, yeah, Ryan, just to add to that, uh, the rendering, unfortunately, uh, I think treats the site as if it was clear cut. Yes. Uh, and that is not the situation. If you review or take a look at the grading plan, there's substantial area, both on the Ballard Road side and the Blue Lupine area, where we can maintain existing vegetation. It'll be selectively cleared and not just clear cut as the proposal, which means that between natural vegetation and the addition of you know, evergreen trees, we will provide screening of the self storage and also of the, of the actual garage site. Right. Yeah, so that, that's just one thing you want to make sure that you and the applicant understand is that, uh, you know, there was a residence has a concern of you know, the aesthetics and making sure that, you know, the building is uh, shielded and screened. That's correct. We recall the resident at the last planning board meeting, yes. Correct. So um you want to make sure and that's something that the planning board should evaluate and take into consideration i mean we are only giving preliminary or proposed if the board so chooses to give preliminary approval tonight um so you know additional landscaping or you know on the final motion when and if it is granted uh, for approval of the site plan something could be noted with the vegetation at that time okay <clears throat> That's it for you, Ryan? Yes, and uh, you know, I just I still have to review the stormwater design, um, things like that, but I will be in communication with Lynn as I move forward with that review. Okay. Any, uh, any comments or questions from the uh, board members? Mike, can you hear me? I can. Oh, okay, Mike, yeah, yeah so I, before, uh, uh, at the uh, public hearing, then, he, if I get Ryan right, he's going to have a picture from Ballard Road that shows more at the right of the building. 
looking at the building to the right of it. So where it's green, is that what you, is that what you want for uh, the public hearing? Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, they could provide more details on their landscaping plan of an enhanced landscaping plan to um, provide a denser evergreen buffer. Right, right now, all it's shown right. is white pines, which, you know, a lot of people, the vegetation usually dies off and they're very sparsely uh, with vegetation. So, right. I, mean, I, I like this picture. I, like, I mean, this, the, the picture of the, uh, you know, the, the rendering of it. I think what you were talking about, you just need to show more to the right. I, I think you said to the left, but I think you mean toward, towards the right is where the neighbor's going to see. But this is from the corner, right? This is Ballard Road looking at. Correct. So that's, yeah, I'm, I was actually mentioning two different. Bless you. Bless you. Thank um, Two different locations. So, yes, to the, as you're looking at this rendering, to the right side would be the shielding. That's part of the road. Okay. Yeah. And to the left, as you see the self storage buildings, the lower buildings off to the left. Yeah. They're going to try to retain the existing natural vegetation that is there now that we can't see with this rendering. So, you know, in this area here, yep. there should be some taller, thicker trees shielding it from view. Right. But I was thinking more for the neighbor's benefit, what we're looking at more to the right, <clears throat> you're talking about the, the uh, group of pines that are going to shield the uh, parking lot. Yes, a, this view here. Yes. Right. right. To, even more to the right of that. Isn't there a... Yes, even there? further further down, yes. Yeah, right. Okay, that's what I wanted to see. Yeah. You would like to see something in that area? Or? Well, I think that's what the neighbor was concerned with, right? The neighbor across the street, that's what he's going to be looking at. Correct. Yeah, that's like, like a picture. I mean, this is nice. The picture's nice, but, you know, a picture from a, what the neighbor across the street is going to see. If, if I can mention something, neighbor across the street, their house probably sits back, I'm going to say two to 300 feet from the road. Uh, right. they, will, they will see this facility when they drive out their driveway and come to Ballard Road. But uh, I, I'm, 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 I'm kind of questioning whether they will see this site from their house because it sits back so far. If they do see it, uh, it'll, it'll won't be uh, large and uh, ominous, but we do. I do understand your suggestion or recommendation that we add more uh, screening, and, and we'll do that on the plan. Okay. And then you know allowance has got to be made. I mean, it, it is zoned. It, it's zoned uh, industrial, right? Or I. Uh, C two. C two C two light industrial. C2, yeah, the yeah. commercial. They're in the commercial, but directly across the road is the residential. Okay. So I mean, it's not. I mean. You know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to look like business is going on. You know, you want to, can't make it that's, look. That's a concern that John Stanley has, is that you know, he, he, he don't want to totally hide the facility, if, if at all possible, he'd like right. to see people go by, you know, observe. <clears throat> that's it. That's all I got. Thank you. Yeah, this is Jeff. I had a question. Uh, you, you mentioned your Willy Water separator system. <clears throat> yes. Now that is just going to be strictly for washing the vehicles, cleaning them out, and then that water, uh, after it goes to the separator, will be discharged to the uh, septic tank or a separate collection tank. It'll be set, it'll be discharged to the uh, site stormwater system, which goes into a pretreatment basin is the first uh, part of the uh, stormwater you know uh, system, and then you know from there it goes into uh, a gallery drain system, which are 36 inch pipes, which really provide storage uh, you know, for a hundred year storm. So there's no, no water should go off site from this facility. The storage of the water, the pipes will be perforated pipes, which will allow the water to uh, percolate into the ground over time. And then the oil will just be collected in drums and then you'll have a, a shipper come in and remove the waste oil? Yes, there. I don't really know how much oil we're really talking about, but yes, the, the oil water separator. Actually, the the second oil water separator 
will actually close if there, when it gets to a certain point of oil in the system, you know, ahead of the, uh, between the separator and the uh, wash pad. So at that point, you know, the, the wash pad, that's a kind of an indicator to the owner that he has to uh, pump out oil from that uh, separator. Okay. Uh, last question then there's, um, I'm guessing like berms prevent any kind of uh, oil or liquid from flowing out of the building onto the, onto the ground? The, uh, the building will have a, a drain also, which then connects to the uh, outside wash pad, which, you know, then is part of the, uh, the oil water separators. So any, any oil from the building will also be captured by the oil water separator system. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Hi, Brett. Yeah, I have one. Um, I appreciate the, uh, the rendering and the enhanced uh, landscaping and the fence in particular. Um, uh, and I saw on the la lighting and landscaping plan, basically wall pack lights on, on uh, each end of the building where there's a garage entrance. Is that correct? Uh, yes. Uh, the, the wall packs really will just, are, they direct light downward. They don't, the, the ones that we'll select will cast light downward to provide security along the building, but not cast light outward. They won't be like spotlights per se. There'd be more, you know, downcast lights, probably lighting an area of about maybe 20 feet around the building, or at least in the front and the rear of the building. Yeah, so not on the side facing Ballard Road, correct? Um, There's no lighting on the Ballard Road side, that's correct. Thanks. And this town has uh, specs on that type of lighting, Ryan? Yeah, we basically state that there shall be no light cast off of the property. And they shall be um, uh, night sky, you know, compliant. Everything should be shining down and nothing casting off the property. Yep. We can provide uh, catalog cuts for the lights uh, as part of our submission, okay. showing their uh, area of lighting. Yep. That's it, thanks. <clears throat> You good, Brett? I am good, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, uh, we're looking for a motion for preliminary, if anybody's uh, looking to do so. I'll make a motion, Mike. Okay. I'm, I lost you, Bill. Oh, can you hear me now, Mike? You hear me? I, I can now. Okay, I'll make a motion. I move to uh, I move to approve the application for a preliminary site plan by John Stanley for Stanley Business Facility for a one-story, four thousand square foot garage with an attached six hundred twenty-four square foot office and two ten thousand square foot single-story self-storage facilities. Property located at two. Blue Lupine Lane in Ballard Road on 3.54 acres, tax map number 128-1-91, zone C2. This is Brett, a second. Okay, I'm sorry, was there a second on that? Oh uh, yeah, Brett. Oh, okay, all right. Comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, very good, thank you. Thank you very much. Everybody, how do I get out of this now? <laughs> in the lower lower right hand corner, there should be a leave meeting in red. Just put the tablet in the refrigerator. There you go. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Good, night. Good night. That's what our me that's what our medical professional says. Absolutely, freeze that sucker. <laughs> 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 okay. Uh, next, we have Michael Decker Spectrum at Wilton Market. <laughs> uh, it's a pre-app uh, slash conceptual 
by Michael Decker and CT Mail for Spectrum at Wilton Marketplace for a proposed project plans to construct a 4,050 square foot commercial building. Property is located on Lodge Drive on 0.92 acres, tax map number 153.3-37.1. It is zone C1. Ready for me, Mr. Chairman? We are. <laughs> okay. Thank you all. Um, uh, just to go over quickly, um, we are seeking the concept approval tonight. We'd like to get back uh, as quickly as possible to keep the project moving forward. Um, for many of you were, uh, have been on the board um, since the original subdivision uh, was approved. Um, you may have noticed that Aldi's is under construction, uh, as is the road, um, which is to be uh, now known as Marketplace Road. Um, and uh, so um, Mike Decker representing Mali Development that is part of KMDA, which owns the remainder of the property outside of, of the Aldi's lot, um, is uh, uh, proposing this lot which is consistent with the variance plan um, that was the overall uh, review and subdivision plan that we had done, uh, I'm gonna say back in 2015. Um, uh, and, and now here we are with the Aldi's finally being built. The, um, uh, this project was, the, the layout of this lot is very similar, if not you know, mostly uh, consistent with um, what was on that plan that you reviewed at that time. Um, we are either meeting zoning or meeting the variances that we had been approved for at that time. Um, there is an access drive uh, to uh, Lowe's and that is a shared access drive, which is at the right hand or the left hand side of the screen. Um, you see the bottom part of the Aldi's uh, uh, parking lot there. And this will be um, a, 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 really a, a simple one-story building. Um, the, uh, we'll be doing a rendering to um, emphasize the, uh, what the building will look like. And um, it, it, the, uh, it is intended for use by Spectrum. Um, any of you that have had to go down to the only local Spectrum office down by Stewart's in Saratoga know that um, uh, they really are are searching for a, a space with some more parking and better to serve their customer base. Are they gonna uh, close the other one, Frank? Are they gonna close the other one? You know what, Bill, I don't know. I, I can ask the the, uh, um, the client that tomorrow. It is a lease uh, situation, so Spectrum will be leasing this. Um, I have a sense that they may be leaving that site just because uh, the Stewart's lot gets extremely crowded. Um, as you've probably all noticed. Um, so um, uh, so that's, that's why they're moving out here, I believe, uh, as much as I have been told. Um, they want to move fast. Uh, they want to try to, um, well, before all the COVID stuff, uh, the, uh, uh, they were looking to have a building in and ready to be um, utilized by November. Um, we want to try to keep them moving as fast as possible. They are talking with contractors now we have the advantage of the fact that as part of the Aldi's approved plans um, this front lot was graded uh, down almost to the level um, where we need it to be for this building so um, and Bill Morris has done a, a great job out there um, so we're 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 not pad ready but we're we're pretty pretty <coughs> So the, uh, the parking will wrap around. We do have right now shown uh, stormwater down in the front. We understand Ryan had um, comments about that, um, that we'll have to um, revisit and consider options uh, during the preliminary design. Um, and, um, but I think, uh, I think we meet everything that you've seen before. And what I'll do now is to keep it in the interest of time, uh, let you ask the questions. Okay, <clears throat> Ryan, if you want to go over um, your letter. Okay, uh, I assume everybody 
saw my letter and took a look at it. I think some of the, the highlights were the major impact of this project, I think, would occur. Um, one would be, as everybody can see, um, let me grab my little drawing thing here. Uh, right here is Lowe's Drive. This is Lowe's Drive right through here. And this is the new road coming in adjacent to the Lowe's store in the parking lot. Um, so this would be a new curb cut here. And this will be a curb cut that is built with all these. So the thought is, you know, or the concern is the distance from Lowe's Drive to this new entrance spectrum. And is it really necessary to have this full access entry into the spectrum parking lot when they will have this entrance right here, which is just a little over 100 feet uh, down the road from this entrance. Um, and additionally to the north off of Lowe's Drive, in the future, I believe there will be another curb cut placed for the um, north side of the building for access there. Oh, there is. Oh. So that's something, yeah, right here in the future. And that's another question I have. Is this part of this project or is there a paving limit line <laughs> Spectrum will build to? Um, Ryan, we would probably be having the pavement limit line there at this time. I will address that with the owner. Uh, as, as I already noted, they are the owner of that property as well. Mm -hmm. um, that is where we had tentatively and on the original plan shown a, logic, a, a likely entrance point. Um, the only thing that we want to reserve is since we said at that time, we don't know who all the tenants will be and what kind of specific requirements they would have. So pinpointing that entrance now would handcuff us a little bit with the, um, uh, with the future development. So I think what we would probably be doing is where you just drew that line, having a, a pavement close off there. Okay. So, <clears throat> but as far as future access to Spectrum, they will have other means when this is developed, when and if that happens, they will have access on the other side as well. Um, so, you know, the planning board just needs to take that in consideration and uh, thinking about, you know, the limit, the number of curb cuts, you know, on this new road, because more curb cuts, more issues with traffic usually get, so it's good access management to use the limit number of curb cuts that's just a good planning policy to have um and i don't think it would hinder their business to have a full access at this point here and you know on their site plan. so that's one item um took care of the other and as long as we're talking about access um we, when we talked about all these we also discussed pedestrian mobility uh, I think everybody realizes there's people that do walk along Lowe's Drive. There's two bus stops down by Five Below and Panera. And um, something that's been discussed in, in the future of providing, you know, some pedestrian mobility in these projects along the side of the road. So something to think about and what the board would like to see in this area. I know it was discussed at all the time of all these. Um, and it was kind of pushed off at that time for the other future developments to kind of take it on as a uh, means to uh, provide access for you know pedestrians in this area along Lowe's Drive. So for those two items, um, and also in my number six on my letter, the stormwater management area in front of um, the building, which is in this area here, on the corner of Lowe's and the new road, um, which is Marketplace Road. It's preferred not to have stormwater management areas along the frontage of a building. If um, you know they can do it elsewhere, it's preferred. Uh, probably a lot of you have seen in front of Panera in Lowe's Drive, uh, that you know stormwater management area that is usually silted in black debris, uh, the rocks and everything else that are there, and occasional flooding. 
Um, and that's what's trying to prevent here is just, you know, an unsightly area on the corner. Um, preferred to have some nice escaping and then just enhance the area. Um, I don't know if, you know, moving the building closer to the road and, you know, providing stormwater management to the rear or something, or even doing underground stormwater management um, would be more beneficial in first of the area. Um, I think some of my other items are, you know, uh, standard comments, and I think uh, Frank will be able to address them and provide more information as we move forward. If you had any of those items, Frank, that uh, were of concern on my list? Right. No, the ones from uh, ten on on your list are are the are the basic uh, things that we always expect to need to do. Yep. Ryan, the only I guess on number thirteen, where you're asking for the map from OPRHP and the correspondence for review by agency. We had done that during the, and, and maybe it's appropriate time to talk about the seeker for this. We had done an overall seeker um, uh, for the um, subdivision plan, the, the, the variance plan, and um, uh, we, we had identified uh, with OPRHP at that time we just did OPRHP um, for inclusion uh, in the SWIP for ALDES. Um, this area has already, as part of that plan, this area has already been disturbed. We can get another letter. It's just that I think we have stuff on file already with the town in terms of the clearance of, of the entire property. Um, so that, Yeah, it would just be a, um, an update to that letter just to have with this file, this application. Okay. Um, but the others are um, are all the straightforward questions um, that we're that we're used to. We don't see anything that would be um, at all difficult to provide there. Well, Frank, um, what about reduce? What about eliminating the one access? I can tell you that the client really wants it, and we had it on that original variance plan. And I respect the fact that you did not go into detail on those plans. So you know, but it was shown on that original variance plan. They see it as a means of not only getting into this site um, uh, readily, but also that um, uh, people might want to continue along and access the remainder of the site without going into the the drive that is for Aldi's. Um, Bill, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh, uh, argue with anybody about it. It's they do want it. I'd like to be able to um, express their uh, uh, and talk with them further about it, um, express their desires as to why they think it makes um, sense for their site. If, uh, if they surprise me and say they don't want to go when I tell them that the board is, uh, is really not uh, in favor of it, and they say take it out, then it'll be taken out. Um, Ryan and I had, when I got his letter, we had talked about the idea of, you know, the in-between would be to have it uh, as a uh, an entrance only rather than uh, the full access. Um, they uh, are I, they I are like the, developers. This is what they think to do, Bill. They, they, yeah. they but I like to know what Spectrum thinks. I mean, if you're going to go to Spectrum, you know, you're going there. You're on a mission. You know, you. Yeah, yeah. You want to get in, and you know, um, whether there's one or two entrances, you're going there to do something, and nothing's going to. I would imagine stop you whether there's if there's only one entrance. I mean, you know, you know, you want to see less entrances, less curb cuts. Yeah, I, 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 I can't argue that, but I can't also argue with my clients' knowledge of their business and their lease. And the, so you have the spectrum people who would like it. You know, they they want it. You know, they want it ease of access and and uh, simplicity for their um, tenants or their customers. The the real estate uh, development firm wants it. Um, we'd like to at least take the shot at showing what type of uh, traffic implications it is. Um, we'll consider the alternatives. We have other things to consider there, as Ryan had mentioned um, about the stormwater. You know, moving that, the you know, what we have to do there may influence what we can do with the driveway if we had to wrap around there. 
right. um, we're, we're, we're going to move quickly. Um, we would like to at least have the opportunity to present um, uh, plans uh, that, that show the merits of it. And we'll be cognizant and realistic of the fact that if the board is, uh, you know, uh, duly opposed to it, we're going to, we're, we're going to, we're going to want to get the building in. That's hey, what Frank. Yep. Um, I just have a question. Considering the other entrance, which you're going to have a pavement line and it's the same property owner, correct? In, in on which side up at the, we're going further yeah. up Lowe's Drive. I yeah. mean, yeah, there we go. So eventually, and, and I know you probably can't speak to this at this point in time, you'll have a pavement line, which Ryan kind of drew out. Um, and, and maybe you can't answer this at this point in time, but if, if whatever does come in this area, are we, and it's probably just an assumption that it would have access through the backside of Spectrum? Uh, through up in that area, yes, yeah. it, would, it would have access. The okay. how I think one of the things that we have to recognize is is just how long it took us to get the Aldis here. Um, the there with the you know retail development the way that it has been. I can't tell you when that driveway is going to be done. Um, it's going to be based on tenants you know coming forward um, and or them finding tenants. So. Um, so we're open to the discussion on that in terms of uh, how and when it should be done um, and how that works with the other act. I'm not going to, I'm not going to use not having that entrance as the reason to have the entrance down below there. Um, uh, but we will, we'll look at it. And uh, if the board is inclined um, to move towards that entrance now, I'll, I'll talk with the, with the applicant about it. Hey, Ryan. Yes. Um, if we can go back down to the entrance off Lowe's, uh, off Lowe's Drive into that first entrance that we're talking about possibly eliminating the marketplace, isn't it? The distance, yeah, uh, the distance uh, from <clears throat> that intersection uh, from Lowe's Drive onto Marketplace into that entrance going in um what are we about 100 120 150 feet somewhere in there yeah it's just over 100 feet i believe i looked at it earlier uh, right i'm showing from the from the stop bar at at lowe's drive oh you're looking at this dimension yeah from there to there yep. to the to the center line of the entrance it looks like it's about 130 feet Okay, my my concern on this would be as time goes on, and uh, Marketplace Road gets developed eventually. Um, the plan was all the way to Gick Road. As as the traffic increases, obviously, um, we want to get people we want to get people off Load Drive, and if they're indeed are going to turn into the marketplace road i would prefer not to have any kind of vehicles potentially slowing down the traffic turning from low drive down to marketplace uh, that being said looking at you do have a uh, a, uh, a full-blown entrance down just a little bit farther on marketplace um i'm i'm kind of looking at I would much prefer that first entrance into the site is is not there. And I know you mentioned even maybe maybe a right in um, or a right out only, but even that at some point, um, Marketplace Road is only single you know single lane in each direction. So you're you're going to have the potential of people coming in, slowing down to make that right hand mm -hmm. turn, and I just. And again, I'm not I'm not so sure on a four thousand square foot building. Um, there's real a real need to have uh, you know that entrance and another one down on um, uh, market 
Marketplace Road, and then uh, even potentially another one off Lowe's mm -hmm. Drive that I know you really don't know yet what's going to happen, but, you know, the potential's there. That's that's how I feel about it, just for some input. Right, no, I, I appreciate that, Mike. Um, uh, you know, I remember when we talked about uh, the Walgreens, and that was a big concern of people turning off of Route 50, and they didn't want the access off of Old Gick Road for that very reason of somebody slows down to make a turn in, and next thing you know, yep. the, the person behind them. The only thing I would say is I don't I don't see Marketplace Road, and and maybe this is you know I'm not looking far enough into the future, but I don't see this intersection ever being like the Route 50 intersection in terms of the volume of traffic. Um, so, but I, I, I hear the concerns and um, uh, I, I would like at least the opportunity. So when we come back with um, preliminary that we'll, we'll get it, give either uh, evidence that, that uh, sways you at that point or we'll have taken it out by then. Um, and uh, uh, that's, that's what we would just like the opportunity to do. It gives me a chance to cons consult with the, with the uh, applicant and um, let them know what the board's feeling is. That's certainly fair. Yep, I agree. Thank you. Yeah, so something else to uh, just recall is that across from Lowe's Drive going over to Saratoga Hospital, um, eventually there will be a connector in that area as well. Oh. It was part of the master plan. So um, it just, you know, another thing to consider. Yeah, and Ryan, I want to, I want to apologize because I'm looking at my plan sheet here and it's got all of Lowe's drive on there and I'm looking on here and it, something must have happened with the plot file when, when you got uh, not all of Lowe's drive on there. So I don't know uh, whether it happened in the transmission or what, but uh, yeah, it must be a benefit to be able to see all of Lowe's drive there. Both yeah. Sides. From the PDF, I think uh, somehow it, yeah. So my, my apologies on that. We'll make sure it's right on the next one. Hey, Frank? Yes, Bill. What's, what's the status on building right now? I mean, is uh, when do you expect to have LD finished? And I mean, what, Well, um, uh, we, are, uh, we are continuing all of the site work. And the reason that that was able to be done is because right, right now. <laughs> the, the fact um, is, uh, oh, I, I love seeing Ryan with his, with his head in the, in, the, in the middle of that. It's on location. Um, on location, uh, on location. Oldie. So, um, because it is a road construction, that was given clearance uh, under Essential. Um, and Ryan and I um, uh, discussed the fact that uh, you really could not do all that earthwork for just the road. Uh, so the site work was allowed to continue and Bill Morris is moving ahead. Uh, with all of that, and there's been no contestation on um, uh, on whether or not that was um, uh, allowed to be continued. The the building is um, uh, at least the last I heard. Uh, the building department was wasn't issuing the final building permit um, because the grocery store building itself did not meet the essential construction um, level. So. Uh, they have it planned for deliveries of uh, some of the uh, steel uh, or the, you know, the, for the foundation work um, uh, April 21st. And, uh, but they may be sitting there for a bit, but the site work is going to continue. Aldi's really wants that store to get uh, up and going uh, after all this time. Um, so we may end up getting very far progressed on the, uh, on the site work. Um, uh, while the building is held up a little bit. Um, but that is also why the opportunity to um, try to keep this one rolling um, because a, a, a builder will be able to get this, uh, get this going rather re relatively quickly because all the pre-work has been done on the lot. Right, you know anything about when they're gonna resume construction or you don't know? You don't have, you haven't heard anything about the state. Oh, the bit. state? No. Yeah, well, it's Frank, not the not governor. The governor. Yeah, the governor won't take my calls. Right. Or the, or the president. 
How's that possible? Rightly so. <laughs> he obviously doesn't know the power that Ryan has to just have a sight come up behind him and look at what I've done, you know. Is <laughs> well, look at all this equipment I have working. I know, at, at his disposal. <laughs> So oh, doors aren't essential construction, though, huh? You think you could slip yeah, that one in there? I would think so, too. Well, yeah, it's some gray area. Um, we're allowing Bill to con continue with the town road and infrastructure because those are considered essential. So it's uh, the Economic Development Council's call on what is essential or not. And it's a food store, so it's part of the supply chain. Yeah, that would be my understanding. It's an essential to any grocery store. That's why, uh, what is it, Target can continue to uh, operate its stores while some of the others, which don't have any food or produce, cannot. Yeah, but, yeah, but the, the governor gave the authority having jurisdiction the uh, ability to make that decision. Okay. But I'd be happy if Ryan wanted to express to the building department that the planning board all feels that way. Yeah. <laughs> I honestly would I would honestly appeal that. I really would. I, I think that you could get a, a green light on that. Maybe I think all these, I believe, Frank, um, all these is taking that route and seeking. Uh... They, are, they are looking into it. They have stores, as I told you, Ryan. Um, they have a store still under construction down in uh, uh, Babylon, uh, Long Island, you know, where it's a yeah. uh, much more hotter zone than ours. Um, and I think a couple other uh, down, others down in the, those areas. Um, so uh, I know that they, they know the situation and they are trying to, um, but it is, it is controlled by the local uh, building department. That's interesting. Uh, so it's controlled by us? So you're not working because of... In not? terms of the way, Bill, in terms of the way that I understand it, and Ryan, correct me, any place I'm wrong. So the um, Empire State Development was given that authority to write the, the guidelines. All right, so we all know that grocery stores are an essential business, the actual operating grocery stores. But when it got down to construction, they were not, grocery stores were not listed under construction. Um, so what they also then said was for enforcement, they look for the local and municipal, uh, um, departments to help, uh, enforce this because they can't be everywhere. Um, I do not, uh, it is such a gray area as Ryan already said, I'm not saying you know, the building department should do this. I would like them to. But I don't have enough. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not Mark Shackner. I can't figure out the legal stuff of this. Oh, well, okay. it's it's a moving. It's very much a moving target. Also, um, the governor or, the governor's orders have been issued and modified. And as recently as either yesterday or Monday, for example, the steward the, there's a new stewards being built in Glens Falls. It was not allowed to continue because it was new construction as opposed to the reason that, that Dave mentioned, or I think it was Dave or whoever mentioned about Target being allowed to stay open, because it's, it's, yeah. it's already in existence. Um, then, then there was an um, Empire State Development clarification yesterday, I think, and now the Stewart's um, new construction is allowed to resume. But Ryan's right. I mean, this comes from the governor through the Empire, through ESD. That's where it comes from. Yeah, okay. but I, I, I can speak to this, guys. I've gotten a bunch of, of these done in my job, and. You know, they're very much, they're all over the place. Ask. Yeah. Ask and you'll get it, I'm telling you. Exactly. Yeah. You just have to ask. Um, you know, Mark is playing a role of, you know, the authority having jurisdiction on making the call. And, uh, you know, I, I've talked to him about it. It's kind of a gray area. But I think if it, someone asks and ESD just says, yeah, they shall. Uh, I can tell you, we asked for our car washes. They said no. Yeah, I could I could see that though. I mean, okay. like I said, that, next year car washing. Next year car washing. You can see yeah, that. Yeah, it's not logical. Uh, I'm I'm not telling you it's logical, and I'm not telling you. If, but I, again, I just you know everything that's been in the supply chain, um, uh, in my my day job, I've been able to get through. Um, you know, just a little work. I so, think it's as logical as a grocery store is going to be built a year, year. from now. I guess. That's yeah. <laughs> 
but I'm a little biased, though, Dave. Okay, so I, I hear you. Well, hey, Ron, I, I'm with I'm with you, Ron. <laughs> I'm gonna appeal the uh, car wash thing myself. <laughs> my fucking dirty. Yeah, what about my 90-day car wash thing? Has that extended there? How's that? Work? Extended. It's, it's extended. extended. Okay. Extended. They've all been extended. Yeah, we we moved them all out and won't start charging them again until uh, we resume normal operations. See, Ron, that's the mistake. It should only be extended for those towns that allow construction to continue. You know? <laughs> I like well, that, Al. If you include interior, you know, because people have to keep their interior sanitized, you may be able to run that angle. Who knows? Well, you know what? We would, I honestly, I understand the interior part not being approved. I, I do get that. I, I don't necessarily understand the exterior portion of it, but you know, it is what it is and we'll deal with it. But uh, we didn't even ask about interior cleaning. Yeah, I think the interior is more important to be sanitized, but anyway. Okay, we digress, okay. Mike. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, we're on track. <laughs> okay, so Ryan, getting back to a comment uh, you made about um, discussion for some sidewalks? Yeah, it's um, been something that has been discussed okay. with Aldi's and the master plan of this area, um, taking into consideration, you know, pedestrian mobility for this area. Um, it's something that should be looked at. Um, it's considered good planning to take that into consideration. Um, yeah, Mike, I. I intended to discuss that with the client tomorrow, um, going over all of these comments. Okay. We weren't able to talk uh, today before this meeting. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll come up with some, some form of a proposal there of what we can do. Um, Ryan, I, I, I would ask this much. Um, if, if we were to add sidewalk along the frontage, um, can that sidewalk be within the right of way? Like, could we put the sidewalk edge right on the property line, but in the right of way? Yes. All right. I figure that would be uh, uh, a concern of theirs, knowing whether or not people were walking on their property or walking on the in the town right away. Yeah, that's always a legal debate: who's liable, who's responsible. Uh, you know, if someone got hurt walking, it's a public access way i mean but the property itself is a commercial public access anyway so the reason another reason i wanted to know is because you you referenced doing some enhanced landscaping out front there mm -hmm. so if i if we can we'll try to do that with the uh, with the sidewalk placement leaving ourselves a little room a little extra room on site to come up with something um to to meet that comment yeah i think this would be a good opportunity to enhance this corner uh, with the new road and uh, kind of enhance the aesthetics along, you know, Lowe's Drive. You know, try to match what's done down the road at the uh, car wash with their extravagant landscaping. Yeah, amen. <laughs> the uh, the other thing, since we're talking about the landscaping out front there, and um, and everyone tries to meet Hoffman's standards, you know, but um, the the sign that is there you asked a question about that that yeah. sign was again given all the variances at the time that we got the variances and that is actually scheduled to be installed as part of the aldi's project um they'll have to get their sign permit uh from mike but that is part of their action and that sign was intended to be one that had uh, a few uh, tenants on it. We had got all the, the signed variant, like at least the variances set for that um, with that original application. Um, and so that is that is intended to be done. If if this project didn't happen, there'd still be that multiple multiple sign out front there. Yeah, that so that that's what, on the corner? what's that, Bill? Is that the rectangle that you can see on the map? Yes. Okay. yes. Yes. So, you know, the consideration with that is just the, you know, what the planning board would look at. There's obviously a separate permit for a sign, but the planning board usually looks at the, you know, the aesthetics of the sign, landscaping around it. So that would be something just to uh, present to the board as well. 
Um, I think it was given, I don't think anything was given with the all these uh, proposal, but um, I would assume that the landscaping package would be part of this application. Yes, yes, they, they, were, they were responsible for the sign and then any landscaping down around it would be part of this project. Frank, what kind of sign? Is it a monument sign? Uh, yes. When we, Ron, I can't, I apologize. I don't have the, the actual detail on it. But when we, when we got it approved, we had three different types of signs that we talked about. Um, and, I, and this was one of the medium size signs. There was one here and one up the road on Lowe's for the future development. Um, so they wanted it because this was going to be at the corner of Marketplace Road and Lowe's Drive. Um, they wanted to at least have Aldi's out front there since they weren't fronting on Lowe's Drive. Um, they wanted to have some space on that uh, joint signage. And I think, I think it was designed to have Aldi's um, and uh, uh, three, three other tenants on, on there. Much the okay. same way, I, th I think one of the things we presented at that time that it would be much the same way that we have out by Route 50 for the Wilton Marketplace signs. Well, that's all you have right now in that, in that uh, development is uh, Spectrum and Aldi's, right? For the Correct. And you, you, this, thing, this, par this one parcel includes uh, a couple of places across this, across Lowe's Drive too, doesn't it? And, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So all the way along the back of the um, of the hospital properties. Yeah. We we will sooner than later probably be coming in for a a, a, a request for the actual site plan request for the actual drive way that Ryan was mentioning that really will be across from this to connect to the Saratoga ambulatory lot. Again, that was part of all of the original planning. Um, most of us know that there's pretty much a dirt driveway that exists there right now. Um, it was in the, uh, uh, the requirements of both the ambulatory lot and our subdivision plan that that connection be fostered and made. Um, so that's something that sooner or later, so that it uh, really starts, anyone who is asking about development across the street wants to know if that connection is going to be made. So Mally is probably, Mally Development is probably going to take it upon themselves to just go ahead and put in the request uh, for that. So I don't know if uh, anybody has noticed, but we lost our chairman. Um, oh, no. Virus? <laughs> So, <laughs> yeah, I saw a little switching there. Is Mike really gone? Yeah. So he said okay. he has yeah, bad, really right. bad service. So uh, I think our vice chair will. Oh boy, Halsey's in charge. Oh boy. All right. All right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right, Hal, take us home, pal. Looking for. Well, I mean, at this point, I think Ryan, our our you all said i mean as far as yeah so at this level um you know frank and the applicant are looking for conceptual approval um this meeting was a pre-application and concept review of this uh project so we frank and the applicant are looking for a conceptual approval on what we have seen today tonight um with comments that we've been uh, discussing you know yeah. access mobility so so how um, yes so if you if you go in that direction board i mean obviously frank palumbo's here he's hearing what we're saying but if you go in the direction of a motion i think some of the concerns expressed are significant enough to just be included in the motion as concerns so okay. that um if frank palumbo um you know isn't uh, telling is it for some reason is discharge I'm, I'm making this up obviously and is no longer the consultant for the applicant the applicant doesn't think oh everything we put on paper so far has been blessed by the planning board the access in particular seems like a significant concern right especially if um, the uh, connection to the hospital is that road line up right with marketplace is it like a four-way intersection yes it would be yeah. 
I'm not crazy about having another uh, entrance there, especially Marketplace is going to go all the way back towards uh, Dick. <coughs> that is, that's, I listen to the argument, but I'm concerned with it. Concerned. Well, and, and that that may be, Bill, the, um, uh, I mean, that is a separate application at this point. That isn't before you now. Um, it was before you at one point and was at least conceptually approved at that time. So um, not proposing that now. Ryan knows um, and he has asked us for some, some additional uh, traffic data um, because we, at the time when we, when we originally talked about this, we knew that as development occurred that we would reach a threshold, a threshold of traffic that would call for a more complete um, uh, traffic analysis, including any impacts down on the intersection uh, with Route 50 and any possible signal impacts down there. I don't think we're at that threshold yet, but Ryan is asking for that information. Uh, go ahead, Mark. It looks like you might want to ask something. Yeah, but it's up to hell. Yeah, go ahead. Mark. Well, no, well, no, Frank, only only if you're done, Frank. If you're not done, keep going. Uh, I, I was basically done. We, we, we know that we, we have to address Ryan's question on the traffic, and Bill, you'll have more information to judge that on. Right, so all I'm saying, board, is if you head in the direction of a motion for conceptual, I think it would be appropriate to add something like the board has made the applicant aware of concerns regarding traffic circulation and access. Just something generic like that, so it's part of a motion if you make a motion. I agree. Okay. I guess uh, with that being said, Ryan, if, if you're all set with everything that's on your... Um, you know, yeah, your, I... I think Frank is uh, understanding of the concerns here, and I think he has, you know, I've had several conversations with Frank about this, and um, I think hearing from the board, he's hearing, you know, he has some good feedback to back to the applicant and say the board is concerned with this, this, you know, these items, so we need to either revisit the site um, as far as layout and, um, and take it from there, but yeah, I agree with Mark Schachner stating that we should have something in the motion expressed. Now, um, Mark, should something be mentioned in, in the motion as far as uh, anything to do with the potential for sidewalks? I know that we've discussed it. Some people have brought it up, board members, and, and Frank has acknowledged that they're going to discuss it with the applicant. Should that be in the motion as well? Yeah, I think that's very appropriate, Hal. You, you know, again, somewhere along the line in the motion, it could say something as simple as, the board has made the applicant aware of concerns regarding traffic circulation and access and sidewalk issues. Uh, board, this is Brett. Board, I'm, I'm concerned about what, what does preliminary approval mean? What are we preliminarily approving if it's not the design that's being presented before us? And, and that, you're not, that's you're not. Sorry, go ahead, Ryan. Uh, just conceptual. Just wanted to yeah. Express. I'm sorry, I used the wrong word, but what, but the, the concept that's being put before us is, 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 is not something that we find uh, a, a, a approvable. So why are we talking about granting conceptual approval? I don't see a concept in front of me that, I, that, that looks like what it's going to uh, ultimately be if the applicant is, you know, were to come back and, and revise the plan in accordance with our uh, with our feedback. So I, I guess I'm, I'm confused about why conceptual is, is being entertained at this point or what exactly that means. Well, I, I don't know if Mark wants to address that, but I, but I think in the past, Brett, we've always, I, I think a conceptual plan is, is something just that, it's a concept. And then I think typically when the applicant comes in, as long as there's no major issues, now these are some pretty large issues that we're asking, um, but I think prior to giving preliminary and or slash final, I think we've always given the applicant the chance to go back and make the adjustments, uh, make the changes and talk with their applicant about some of the stuff that we're looking for before we move ahead through preliminary and final. I don't know, Mark, is it, that's typically the way I've always viewed it. I, I mean, I think that's an accurate statement, Brett. I'm gonna, I'm gonna suggest that I think your comment is extremely appropriate but Mike is not on the on the um, at the meeting anymore, and if I if and if anybody disagrees with what I'm about to say, please do so. But in my experience here in Wilton, Mike has been very very much uh, in favor of promoting the conceptual approval 
I hate to use the word, but concept, even if the plan is going to be under, going to be undergoing some reasonably wow. some some even substantial changes. My own opinion is I think Brett's comment is extremely appropriate, and you know it, it, this is not it sounds like um, a concept plan that if it was come if it came back to you for preliminary that the board would likely approve. So you will not hear me, Brett or or any other members. You will not hear me pushing in any way for conceptual approval at this stage for the reasons Brett's, Brett has articulated. I think it's a very appropriate comment. There is some Wilton history, and I think Hal is sort of in, uh, referring to this. Right. There is some Wilton history of trying to keep all applicant applications moving forward, and conceptual approval is the first board step in keeping the applications moving forward. I think I said something similar to what you said, Hal, but with different words. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I appreciate that, Helen and and Mark. So uh, that that makes me more comfortable, uh, given that you know this is our this is our kind of standard practice, and it doesn't prohibit us from um, you know from kind of standing our ground if they come back with exactly the same thing, and oh well, we have conceptual, therefore um, let's just move ahead with that for preliminary. Um, I, I would hope that we would react. Um, differently to, to that at the preliminary stage and would have and would not be handcuffed uh, because I, you know we've we've had a number of, of comments uh, no offense Frank we have a number of comments along the way in the discussion here about well when we when we had the 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 uh, uh, the, the variances granted and, and and that was addressed in the overall plan well the overall plan isn't site plan and I've been castigated a number of times by by my fellow board members kindly when I brought up a, a concerns that are further down the the, the path of our consideration then should be considered at the time. But then I don't want that to, to, to have momentum behind us so that we can't raise issues and make changes because, well, that was already talked about and, and you didn't raise it then. So so we therefore we can't raise it now kind of a thing. So if, if, if it's about history and we'll have the opportunity to address all of our concerns at preliminary, I have no problem with conceptual. Well, and, I, and Brad, I, I, appreciate, I appreciate all you said. What I will also add is that um, there is an acceptance of risk on our part. If we come in with a plan with preliminary, because there's a lot that we have to do to address, you know, just take the stormwater comments, you know, that could, that could force us into some changes that would, um, uh, that, that could, you know, change this plan and we have to come back with that. But I understand on the access, if my client says, no, push forward, push forward, I'm going to be telling them that there's a risk of you not getting your approval. With that, we're going to be back at the board. So, you know, the the fact that it's concept approval, and I agree with all that Mark said and what Hal said in terms of the history and how it's been done. But if I come back in with a plan with that there, I and I don't get past preliminary, I'm not going to be surprised. I'm going to make my best effort to say why it should be there. Um, but you're going to be making that decision at preliminary. So I I don't think that granting conceptual and allowing us to move forward is is relinquishing anything in terms of uh, it's it's on the record basically that you know that it's there. I don't think we'd be bullying anybody into that access. We're either going to have good merits or not. Go ahead, Mark. Yeah. So uh, I appreciate everything Frank just said, but getting back to again, I think Brett's comment was very appropriate. While Frank, your comment is reflective of Wilton history as well the the language in our in our law about conceptual could be interpreted or could lead one to believe that 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 as long as the applicant comes back with something that looks a lot like what was approved at concept stage it will get preliminary so i'm going to suggest what what is mike back ryan you're Not, muted uh, ryan ryan you're, you're gonna unmute yourself oh, you're sorry muted. there he, he is uh mike is listening in via telephone so okay so I'm going to suggest if the board wants to go concept approval, I'm going to suggest slightly beefing up the language that I first suggested. Um, and I'm just running this by the board. I just wrote it on a piece of paper. Uh, the board has made the applicant aware of significant concerns, including traffic circulation access and sidewalk issues, and is looking for modifications for the preliminary submission. So, hey, Mark, this is Ron. Can we also add the stormwater management area? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. And can and should. I'm comfortable with that. Did you get all that, Amy? To put that in the motion. I can do it slower if you want, Amy. You're muted. 
Yep, I didn't hear Amy. I'm un no, I'm unmuted now. I was muted. You want me to say it slowly? <laughs> um, I got it, Mark. I'll I'll figure it out. Well, You're let me say it. Let, let me say it so it's on your tape. Um, I'm suggesting that if the board makes a motion for conceptual approval, it include language to the effect of the board has made the applicant aware of significant concerns, including traffic circulation, access, and stormwater, sorry, stormwater management and sidewalk issues, and is looking for modifications in the preliminary submission. Thank you. Perfect. Okay, I, I guess with that being said, are there any other questions from board members? <coughs> oh, not me. Is that a no, I take it? No. No. Okay, then I guess if anybody's comfortable enough at this point, based on Mark's recommendations to make a motion for uh, conceptual, we can move in that direction. All right, I'll try. I'll try. I, I, I'm sure you got it all written down. Yeah, I got it. Okay. So I move to approve the application for conceptual site plan by Michael Decker for Spectrum at Wilton Marketplace proposed project plans to construct a 4,050 square foot commercial building properly located on Lowe's Drive at 0.92 acres tax map 153-3-37.1 zone C1. All right, I'm going to put your language in, Mark, as best I can. Uh, the board would like to make the applicant aware there was there are significant concerns with the conceptual site plan included uh, to include uh, uh, curb cut and traffic access stormwater management and and the potential for uh, sidewalks Is that close enough and, and is looking for modifications for the preliminary submission perfect Amy you get that last little bit <laughs> I did, Ron. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Okay. I'll second the motion. We have a second. I'll second David Gebe. Thank you, Dave. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, so moved. All right. Well, since Mike is not with us, I would just like to take, before we adjourn and take a motion, I'd like to thank, thank Josh for setting this up. I thought it went thank very you, smoothly. Great job, Josh. Yeah, thank very you, well. Josh. Thank you, and thank Mike and room? Ryan. It's scary looking at the dark room. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Since we had our test run last Wednesday, I thought this went extremely smooth. Yeah. Okay. Well, is there a motion to adjourn? I make a motion to adjourn. Bill. Second? Bill. <clears throat> second? Jeff, second. Right. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Well, then I, I guess we wait and see what happens for uh, next month. All right. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good. <laughs> Take care. Stay healthy, Good everybody. We'll Good job, time. everybody. Thanks. Thank Good you night. very much. God bless America, Ryan. <laughs> God bless. <laughs>